Good evening, this is the Oklahoma Strangler, and I am drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started that uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Drinking the Moe's be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff. They got t-shirts. They got hoodies. They got beans. They got lots of great stuff encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone, live their best self, and Hey, it's something I try to live every day. Now, be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order, use the code Drinking at Mo's, get 10% off, and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking All go. right, everybody. Welcome, Drinking at Mo's. Big Mo here. You know the drill. YouTube, like, subscribe comment share leave reviews all the good stuff on the audio platforms because those algorithms are a pain in the ass anyways i'm excited to have with me back for another round the oklahoma strangler how you doing i'm doing well how about yourself my friend oh i i can't complain like we kind of talked about before we started recording got a Meet Mike Bennett again for like God, I'm trying to remember how many times, but hey, it's a great time every time. One of the nicest dudes ever. But uh, you know, you've had some stuff going on since so oh, God, what it been about a, a little over a year, I think. I'm trying to remember over a, year. a lot of bad, and it ended up, it's this year started on a good note, though. Hey. That that is good silver lining right there. But yeah, there some of the bad stuff. That, I mean, to kind of get that out of the way because you know we like to keep things lighthearted and fun. Absolutely. You, you had. I mean, there's a bit of a back scare that you had. That I mean, yeah. it was looking kind of serious, but it you know got sorted out, right? Yeah, it was a big scare. I ended up. Right before I was supposed to head to Mexico, I was finishing up a shift at my day job. I got off a forklift. My legs gave out. Felt like someone poured hot coffee down my legs. Mm. And I had a bit of a – I had a, a bulging disc in my lower back. But yeah. with uh, – we did some sh injections and a lot of PT. I'm able to move pretty well now. Hey, that that's uh... – I have to do a lot of stretching in the morning and before I try to lift weights and wrestle, but could have been much worse. They were talking surgery. Oh, yeah. No, then, hell, back, back surgery can be a bit of a chore rehabbing from, from oh, everything. That been the end of yeah. Now, not only that... But uh, there was a bit of a car issue. Like a, now, <laughs> yeah. I know the way you described it sounded <clears throat> similar to something that I had happen once. Now, what what all happened there? I was about three hours out from Michigan and right off the highway in a little town called Michigan City, Indiana. My engine threw a rod. Mm. Left me stranded on the side of the highway. Wow, that that's nuts because I know my wife and I one time at, no, we got foster dog. My wife and I help with the bulldog rescue and our foster, which if she'll hey, our little Frenchie here, <laughs> she's pretty much attached to my hip and it was looking like she was getting into something she or doing something she shouldn't be down here. But anyways, wife and I were going to a Luke Combs concert a couple hours away. We are almost there. And all of a sudden, like right after my wife took over driving, it was like the end, like it, the card was just stopping. 
mm-hmm. full of gas and everything, and then poop, smoke. It wasn't on fire or nothing, but yeah, no, it wasn't going anywhere. So we ended up getting, you know, triple A called and all that, and then uh, what was it? Oh, we get there, we get to the hotel, we get an Uber to the concert. And we were going to be there early because we were like main floor, like in the pit. And <laughs> we got there right as they were letting people in. So we went from being early to like, we were just right there. I mean, it was a good show. I mean, Luke Combs is always a good time, but yeah, that was nuts. But then it was that same trip. If I remember you telling me right, that, it also led into a uh, whole situation with some uh, bus rides, which yeah. I've got my I've got my own horror story with the Greyhound bus rides. That ugh. it took me three days to get back home. I forget how long it took me to get back to Nebraska from where I was, but. The things I do remember was one bus broke down. Then they got us put on another bus. My didn't find this out until I literally got to Oklahoma City that apparently my luggage got put on the wrong bus. Oh, geez. And then I went around looking through the Oklahoma City Greyhound station only to end up missing my bus from there and having to wait eight hours for another one and only to find out that my luggage made it to Omaha before I did. That's wonderful. Yeah, so I I pretty much sworn off buses from that point. Well, it was an interesting trip. I ended up being in Indianapolis for just shy of 12 hours. Missed my connection in St. Louis, so my poor wife and her friend had to drive the five and a half to St. Louis to grab me. You know what? Funny thing. The... We ended up... Oh, some... Like, I was like, what the hell? I don't know if it was something from my pop here, but... Oh, wait. Anyways. Weird stuff at the house. Anyways, we uh, back to the bus situation. We stopped for gas late at night, and then I was like, "What town are we in?" And they said it. It was literally maybe less than an hour from my hometown, which was where I was going, anyways. So I was like, "I remember I just called my dad up and like, hey, can you come and get me?'" <laughs> so he did. But yeah, nope, I've sworn off buses. I, I, the extra I'm, little bit for a plane ticket, worth it for me. I've sworn off ever driving my personal car outside of the state of Oklahoma again. That, after what you've been through, I would imagine, man, that, that's I'll nuts. I'll spend the money for the rental car, tell you. <laughs> yeah. Now, getting, Back into the wrestling side of things, you've had some good stuff. I know there was. Did the whole thing with Sick Boy still happen, or was no, that kind of post, that that didn't happen because of the whole back scare? Right? Yeah, nothing. It didn't end up happening. No. Like pretty that, much all of that stuff just fell fell apart. Oh yeah, no, that that's unfortunate. But hey. Health is more important. You ended up getting it figured out, which, hey, pretty cool. Glad you got it done. But then led to some other opportunities with uh, a promotion that I've admittedly missed. Whoever runs their social media doesn't seem to like me too much. With (laughs) XPW. Now, I was a fan of the original run. Like loved it. I've uh, even yeah. I've even met some of the people from it. Like, uh, 
Joey Chaos that runs Santino's down in yeah. California. I've met him a handful of times. Huge fan of his. So what was it? What was your experience with them like? Because I know what it was uh, the stop they did down in Texas, wasn't it? Yeah, that couple weeks back in Houston. Yeah, yeah. For uh, it was like a joint thing they had with. And correct me if I'm wrong, Loco Wrestling down there. Correct, yeah. Loco, right right there out of the Houston Premier. That, yeah. You know what? They were definitely the class to me. Hmm? They were a class act to me. Hey, that that's what counts. I've always said, you know, there are places that, you know, I might not, you know, be so much for. I mean, I don't – I'm open to – watching them but you know without with them blocking me on twitter and instagram and stuff i i have to rely on other people telling me when that stuff is right <laughs> but I, I guess it i got nothing against anybody working there you know make your money how you need to make it you know if they're treating you well yeah. that's all that matters for me, it was cool because I was a huge fan of the original XPW run. Supreme was a huge deal for oh. me. I, I was going to say, like, I see some similarities with with you and Supreme. Yeah, I love. I was a huge fan of, of Supreme when I was a kid. Then, it's kind of common knowledge. We probably touched on the last one. The match that made me want to wrestle was Necro and Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. From I, yeah, in I believe we talked about that, yeah. So getting to spend an evening hanging out with Necro Butcher mm. and made teenage Chris in over the moon. Oh, yeah. I think he had a thing that night against, uh, oh, God, I'm trying to. Brick Savage. I'm, I'm, Brick Savage, yes, that's who it was. I mean. I, I joke with people, give me a break. I've recorded over 210 episodes. Brain farts are about to happen at some oh, point. Sure. But yeah, Brick Necro Savage and Brick had an amazing match. match. It was a great match. I was going to say, I, I am going to be looking up footage of that one because, I mean, you and your match and then his match, I, I still... I joked with a, a good friend of mine at the show I went to last night then bringing Rick Savage up and I was like because he had a little bit of a like hmm, who is that again? And then I told him, you remember seeing that clip of a match of his that went viral where he basically picked up a guy by his leg and slammed him like Loki and Avengers? And he's like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, no, I, I talked to him. Brick is insanely strong. Oh, insanely God. strong. I like, think I'm it was 270 pounds. Yeah. And he, we, when we worked in, uh, we wrestled in Austin. Man picked me up with one arm and tossed me. Yeah. I, I remember, you know what? I remember the point of the night that I brought up him last night and it was in a match with another guy that I joked that his arms are as big as my thighs and I said Rick Savage another one of those guys that I mean I've not met him in person but just seeing him I'm like yeah no he, he's the same his, his arms are just massive and just he's like you said scary. strong as hell oh so what was your match like? I know you said you had a good time. There, you had uh, They treated you well. What was your match like? Because, like I said, I have yet to actually be able to go and watch the show yet. I got. I had a really bloody fight with Big Damo also out of Texas. Mm, okay. That, I'm definitely going to have to look that one up. Because, yeah. Very good. I, I've heard of him and yeah, the the image I have in my head of you and him clashing, 
Um, it was a good old Texas brawl. <laughs> I gotta love it. I've been fortunate enough to speak with a bunch of people, you know, you and others in the Oklahoma and Texas area. And there is just something harking back to like the old school, just hard hitting, just smash mouth style of wrestling that goes on down there that I just love. That's my bread and butter. Oh yeah. Now, XPW, they've been seeming to expand from where they were during that original run. I know they had uh, the original run. It was mostly either uh, wanting to say Southern California, and then there was that little bit of an East Coast run with belief centering in Philadelphia. Yeah. But now they're like little spots here and there all. Yeah, they're getting a tour on yeah, because they did one, I believe, not too long ago in Michigan. Then the, but in January we had did Houston. Yeah, and so is this going to end up leading to more stuff with you and them, like being able? I to... can only hope. All right, that that will be. Open, I'm open to do anything with anybody. So, with without with them, um, I also would like to you know talk about some of the other places you've been with wrestling because I know you've been you know more than just XBW. For sure. That's probably what, my highest profile though now. Oh yeah. But what 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 have you been up to on the independence other than there since I'm uh, just slowly getting my feet wet again. Yeah, Being taking it super slow. This month's look real easy. Uh, I've got a little busy March going out to North Carolina, a okay. ton in Arkansas. Okay. I returned yes. for a, a new, I'm debuting for a new company called ICU and down in Killeen, Texas. Okay. Smaller I upstart think, group. But I was going to say, I was, I was curious when you mentioned about that one, like, Hmm. Have I had anybody on from there? Because hell, I believe uh, so. MPX. I've had um, Hot Pro. I've had a bunch of great independent promotions down in uh, Texas. So again, one of those things that you know, with the amount of episodes I've had now. Absolutely. I'm trying to remember every single thing. It's like, hmm, scratching my head there for a little bit. And then I would be remiss if I didn't bring up at my home base of UWO. Ooh. Red Dead oh, Red Iron Man champion. Can't forget nice. about that. Oh, yeah. yeah can't can't forget about those guys. Because, can't yeah. forget about home. Oh, yeah. Can't forget about home. Because I want to say I've had my fair share of people from there too. I mean, even the promoter. Yeah, had to him on very good. That. It was a oh, great yeah. promoter, good man. Oh yeah, I've got nothing but great things to say about him. Now, one thing I've been curious is about with regards to you, and oh, here comes my other dog, making sure he doesn't knock down my setup with my camera here. Anyways. I've been lucky enough to get to have a bunch of people from Matt Tremont's promotion, H2O. And the last show of theirs that I've seen, well, really, I think it might have been the last couple of them, he's had on uh, a shirt with a date on it. And it got me, it got me curious, so I went and looked because... I think you've probably heard about the news that Mick Foley is looking to do one, one more. more death match for his birthday. I saw so that. I, That's crazy. I, I went and I looked after I saw Tream up wearing the shirt with that date on it. It's Mick Foley's birthday. 
Oh, jeez. So I'm like, that led me to think, holy crap, could that happen? I'm all for it. Uh, now, I would, I'm paying to watch that. Oh, yeah. Now, with the possibility that it could be literally anybody, I think it would probably be a safe bet that if you were given the opportunity, you sure as hell aren't passing that one up. Oh, absolutely. I would I would give my left arm to get to be the final death match of Nick Foley. Duh. That would literally skyrocket oh, that would anybody. Make, whoever has it, that's going to be a core memory. Oh, core <laughs> memory for them and that's just right. Good Lord, just thinking, even if they're already pretty high profile, oh. that's going to shoot them up even more. Oh, yeah, that's going to get so many mainstream eyes on you without fail. Oh, good Lord, yeah. Just thinking, you know, the opportunities that, you know, the coverage for your for whatever promotion – and the person involved getting to have that match and all the eyes from hell, even probably I would imagine some non-wrestling outlets are going to be like, huh, Mick Foley's having another death match. We got we got to look into this. All right, that's going to be huge news. So, yeah, like, good Lord, that's going to be huge news whenever that news – breaks out whenever it's going to be. I know when that match gets announced, all the eyes of the world are going to be on it. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it, you'd imagine it would be relatively soon because, I mean, June's going to be here before you know it. Oh, yeah. So I'm like keeping my eyes on that one. Now, you know, the wrestling world has had some rather uh, interesting things happen the last couple of months from yeah. you know everything with WWE and the TTO merger to or tell just recently with you know the guy behind everything is well gone now what has been some of some of your thoughts on all that because Good Lord, they're basically erasing him from history, which, I mean, when you look back at all the history with that company that he was involved in, that's a lot of work for whoever the hell is in charge of doing that. I mean, the sins of your past will always catch up to you. That That is... Uh, Plainly obvious, I guess, right now. Is uh, I, got, I don't follow it too closely because I try to keep my hands out of mm. anything modern going on past like knowing what's happening. I yeah, try to yeah. keep myself from being influenced too much by anything happening in modern time. No, un- understandable. You know, sometimes best policy is to, you know, just keep your nose to the grindstone and just concentrate on your own stuff. Focus on my work. Focus on recarving out my own niche. Trying to find my the the unique formula that takes me to the next level. You know, I I have a good feeling you you'll get back on that track. You know, understandably getting you know. Slow, slowly back in because uh, safe to say you don't want to go back too fast, too quick, right. and risk making what looks like it's been sorted out even worse. Oh, for sure. And like just having four or five months, which isn't a long time, but I sat on the couch for four or five months. I got fatter. I am out of shape. <laughs> I got to kind of get back and get right. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that, that'll that that'll take 
it'll take time, but I'm I'm confident you'll be doing just fine. Now, this the two categories I have. I've been I was struggling with what to put for these two because, to be honest, the only people that I've really had on more than once up until you know recently, I got some people sprinkled in coming back for another round in March. But, you know, trying to remember, hmm, have I done these questions or these names? Because I've had promoter from Warrior Wrestling on a bunch of times, but, you know, after that first one, it's solely been promoting this show, so I haven't really had to worry about it. For sure. But... I would like to I, I'm would like to think I'm pretty confident that I haven't done these in our last episode. So the first one, the name game again, where I'm naming off, you know, we've talked some about death matches and before in the last episode and a little bit, you know, with the bloody brawl you had there with XPW, each of these guys is in my opinion, some of the like nationally known guys in the deathmatch world. I give you the name, you give me quick thoughts on the person like last time. All right. First one kind of mentioned, you know, I've had some good, good relationship working with uh, his promotion. The bulldozer, I guess now the killdozer, Matt Tremont. Uh, he's a legend. Oh, like, most definitely. He's the legend in Deathmatch. He's done all the tournaments with the recent American Deathmatch title. He's got he's held every major Deathmatch boat. Oh yeah. Like he's he's had had them all. Yeah, he is American Deathmatch wrestling. That that is true. You know, when people think of you know death matches death match wrestlers from around the world when they go to America it's Matt true. Tremont's one of those first people most think about for sure yeah, you got him and maybe Nick Gage Nick Gage and yeah everybody else yep Nick Gage I said it a bunch that it is literally on my bucket list to go to a show that he's on especially GCW because Every show of theirs that I've watched that he's on, even if he's just coming out for a quick, you know, say something on the mic and then the rest of the show goes, the moment his music hits, that entire venue is like one big ass mosh pit. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just crazy. Oh, God. It just makes me think every time I see it, damn it, I am jealous of everybody there because I want to be in the middle of that. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Next one, a guy I haven't had on yet, hoping to, but I'll go into a memory I have of this guy. And you know what? I'm one to say it might have been the guy that uh, Tremont beat for that American Deathmatch title. I'm talking about Hoodfoot. Oh, Hoodfoot's fantastic. He's an amazing worker. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember, I still remember completely the night of that big uh, injury scare that he had. And I want to say it was a deathmatch tournament where, like, I remember watching it live and it, like, just ended abruptly. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And then I see pictures online after. I'm like, oh, that explains that. Like, he had, like, a big old gash somewhere on his arm. Oh, yeah, yes, that, his bicep cut open. Oh, man, that was nasty. Yeah. He's definitely on my bucket list of, like, dream fights. Oh, I would I would say that would be one that I would definitely think would be on there. Now, the next guy, I don't believe I had him on at before that last episode of ours. 
I do have something from him up back here behind me. But I'm talking about the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Murdoch. Oh, John, I love John. Like, as a person and as a fan. Oh, yeah. No, I've got nothing but great things to say about him. It, it took me a little over a year to get him on, but it happened. You know, there was there were reasons behind it taking a while. You I know, mean, he's a busy man. Oh, God, he's, he's a damn machine with the skill he keeps. Damn machine. But, hey, when, when you're as good as he is, you're going to be a damn busy person. Oh, for sure. Now, last but not least, a guy I've, I've talked to about coming on, but, again, another busy guy, Akira. Gears great. He's taking over the world. He's probably the next big deathmatch guy. Oh, I if not already one of the oh. biggest deathmatch guys. Oh yeah, no, definitely one of the biggest uh, active ones out there right now. Hell, from his stuff with MLW and going over to Japan and just absolutely killing it. Oh yeah, that first. I can't remember who he got to. Work. That match he fight he had with the on his first tour, but it was disgusting. <laughs> I you know what I'm I think I remember seeing stuff about that posted, but I'm definitely gonna have to look up clips of that because I do remember hearing about it. And then correct me if I'm wrong here. I believe one of the big things he's had with MLW was you know, I mean, obviously the connection with Raven, and then some battles with uh, Ricky Shane Page. Yeah, and those have yeah, been in, in, Callahan on their last set. In, which, which is on the, like their last set of shows, I believe. He had he got to work with uh, Sammy Callahan. Ooh, yeah. You know what? I do remember hearing about that. And yeah. I've I've been lucky enough to go to a handful of shows for his promotion, Wrestling Revolver, and yeah, I can see, judging from the stuff that I've seen from Sammy Callahan there, and knowing the stuff that I've seen of Akira, that one is going to be one that like anybody that hasn't already seen it, needs to go and look that one up if you're a fan of like intense bloody matches. Oh yeah, for sure. That'd be great. I haven't found the I haven't seen it yet, but yeah, yeah. I, I haven't been lucky enough to see it yet, but it is on my list of stuff to look up. All right. Now some random questions here. Some wrestling related, some not. Some have nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. I, I love putting in that line because it always gets people laughing. But anyways, again, trying to think of some stuff that I haven't asked that last time we talked. So I'm feeling confident in this. All right. We, you know, same way. Question. Give me the answer first one that pops into your head. Now, we kind of talked a little bit about, you know, the world of deathmatch wrestling. You know, it some intense stuff in Japan. Mexico's even got a pretty good scene. United States, with all the tournaments and stuff we have, who, which of those, or maybe one that I didn't mention, would you say is crazier? You know, Japan, Mexico, U.S., or, like I said, one that I didn't mention that you think is even crazier than those three? I mean, have you ever seen any of the, the Australian stuff? I, I, I've You're seen kidding? some. Yeah, those guys are just out there swinging the T8 tubes. Mm. It's insane. Yeah. Check yeah. out... Uh, Deathmatch down under or do oh. where's the ring? 
Oh yeah. You know what? I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen some of their stuff and oh man, is it oh right up my alley. Yeah, Joel Bateman's doing crazy this time. You know, speaking of him, my I don't believe this was when we before we last talked. My first like legit death match and not just hardcore with death match slapped on it was actually at Sammy Callahan's promotion and it was Joel Bateman versus Jake Crist. Oh, that was probably the same. Oh yeah, the ending of it was nuts. Four folding chairs, bridging two panes of glass on there, and then Bobby Olson rolls in and I see him pull out lighter fluid from his pocket. They lit the glass on fire. That's fantastic. Oh, I was on on my feet, jaw on the floor, just like I did I just see that. It was nuts. And then I got to talk to them both after the, the match. And I think I even have up on my show's Facebook page a picture of me with Joel Bateman after that match. And his face is still all bloodied up. I was loving it. No. Okay. Dog acting. Anyways. Question I'm pretty sure that I didn't ask the last time you were on. Is hell, I don't even think I started asking until the last couple of months. People, when they talk about big sums of money, like lottery jackpots, and like, oh, could you ever imagine yourself spending that much money? And I was like, hey, yeah, watch me. Because it's like what I like to call fuck it money. You know, you've never been able to afford this. You never would be able to dream of it. But now you got the money to do it, so fuck it, I'm going to get it. What is like one of the first things you would do if you had fuck it money? I would go to you. Like a lot, just take a week, take a month off, go to Europe, see if I can get, get some matches over there. Hey, you know, I could see, you know, the UK, they have a pretty intense scene over there oh, you know yeah. hell british strong style that, that's why they coined that you know i can see you having some good stuff there i love especially like classic british wrestling with the rounds i love it oh yeah that would be some awesome stuff now i didn't have this question in here but you know what i'm gonna with the talks about you know going to Europe, the crazier scenes, and you know, we talked about Mick Foley. What is one match that you haven't had yet that if you could put it out there this year or hell into the future, what is one match that you would want to put out there? I want, I want, well, I want, I'll give you two. I want Necro and I want Sammy Callahan. Ooh. Yep. Solid choices. Oh, man. I know uh, Callahan, he just had a big, well, I don't know if it's really a feud that has concluded, but him and JT Dunn in Revolver, you know, over, you know, the feud with the unit and you know Phil Stamper's not in the unit anymore. I was at the the show where uh JT Dunn fired Phil from the unit. I was actually at that one. And yeah, that would that would be epic. Now now I'm getting memories of that show that that happened at because there was also Steve Macklin, Alex Cologne, and Ricky Shane Page versus the Second Gear Crew. Oh, that was insane. Oh, my God. Matthew Justice jumping off a scaffold. My friend and I, we were on the other end of the venue. And then all of a sudden, we hear these loud, like, cracks. 
and we're like, what the, is somebody dying over there? And then I see a video a day or two after that it's that sound we were hearing was literally Steve Macklin swinging half of a door over the heads of the second gear crew multiple times. It was awesome. I, I showed the friend of mine that went with me that clip and he was like, wow. Yeah. I, I joked with the second gear crew guys before and got them laughing that I say their, their show, their matches might as well be sponsored by home Depot. Hell before that match in the crowd, I literally tweeted out. Um, and here's your home Depot match of the night. All this stuff that gets thrown around in their matches. It's just like, okay, somebody went to home Depot or Lowe's before the damn show. All right. Another question here. Who would you like to play you in a movie? Like, not just somebody that people think you look like, but just anybody. Anybody you think would do a good job of it. Man, I wouldn't want to put that evil on nobody. <laughs> I, I, I've had some thoughts like oh Bradley Cooper in the American Sniper like with the with the beard like you, you get him with that but grow it out a little bit I wouldn't like in the perfect that. ideal world I wouldn't mind that with my military ties and stuff <clears throat> yeah that's it like I know probably would never happen Hell, probably would never happen that I'd even meet him. I mean, who knows? All right, now, last but not least, here, spirit animal. What would you say if you thinking about it? What is your spirit animal? Uh, I'm. A, it's gonna be a strange one, but a honey badger. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I got no like a good choice I laugh because I hear honey badger and I think of that video where the guy's like honey badger did, don't give a shit <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. yeah short fuzzy and aggressive oh yeah and hey especially with the line of wrestling that you do <laughs> it, it kind of fits I know I know for me it would definitely think either kind of a lion or a wolf, one of the two. Because like it reminds me of more so on the lion side. Talk there's this uh picture I saw, kind of a motivational poster talking about it doesn't matter what's in front of you, just who you got behind you, and then it's like a little lion cub. But then the big lions behind it. Yeah, I've seen that. That that would be me for like my kids. It's like you know what they might have some crazy stuff in front of them, but they'll always have me behind them to to help get too much of the craziness. Matt, uh, words are hard. <laughs> too much of the craziness, you know taken care of, I guess, for the lack of a better term to put it, because I'm having a case of mush mouth right now. <laughs> it's early. It's still early. Yeah, it's too early for this shit. Anyways, that is about all I have. But before we go, remind people where they can find you social media-wise. So if all my don't... socials are at OK Strangler. That, yep, I I remember from the last time, but we will get all of that in the description. Foster dog taking a nap now. She's like, OK, are I'm you done, done yet? But we are done for now. Anyways, 
yeah, she's crazy. Anyways, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. It was thank great you, to have you back for another round. And as I said the last time, you're welcome back again anytime. Absolutely. Next time something cool happens, we'll have to do part three. Ah, yeah. Welcome, welcome it whenever it happens. All right. Talk to you soon, my friend. Have a good one.